podcast. Have your first customer on. Okay, sorry, say all that again. The the music was blasting in my ear, and we've begun. Oh, we've started. By the way, I don't know if what you just said is appropriate for mass consumption, but uh, if it is, I'd love to hear it again. Oh, we were just discussing business. Yeah. Uh, future customer. A future customer of this podcast? Well, going to join the uh, the Mission Stories podcast network. Oh, so, uh, <clears throat> Jasmine gonna, wants to start a podcast. A uh, sister podcast okay. on true crime. Uh, That's where the money's at. You're so tr- You're so right. We're like wasting our time here, basically shouting into the abyss. Who's listening to this other than ourselves six months from now uh, and and several other people? But <laughs> The um, true and faithful. The true and faithful. We can't forget about them. But what they really want is a true and faithful crime podcast. Yes. Is she... So she's like down to... Uh, she's done like some research already. For what? Like a well-known one or for like a... A less, you know, covered topic, person, oh, like killer. Some local stuff. <laughs> local? Well, local to Alberta. Some local celebrity killers. There's already someone covering the local crime beats. Okay. I Are you are you in on these things? Hey, welcome to Mission Stories, by the way. This is a, mission, this is a podcast. Are we, are we, we recording? About. This is all being recorded. Are people just listening to us have a conversation? That's how it goes, man. Welcome That's to podcasting. Yeah, welcome to the monetization of friendships. If there were <laughs> if there, <laughs> if there was, was any there's any yeah. Um no, this isn't not none of this is monetized. What what would you call this then? The commo- the commoditization? Yeah. Yeah, that's turning what, it into a commodity. That's maybe what I meant to say. The consumption, little packets for consumption, our yeah. friendship. And also hard hitting news about Mormon things and otherwise. Um, and Latter day Saint things. Latter day Saint things, because it's not Mormon anymore. It's not but Mormon isn't it? any Mormon. But now Mormon has a brand new meaning. What does it mean? It's like the shady people. <laughs> Oh my the gosh! Pro- the are you progressive, serious? It's like progressive Mormons who are refuse, not Latter Day Saints who refuse to fall in line and be called yeah. tr- members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. There's like a whole sect of people who refuse to leave the church, <laughs> but stay in it just to be dissenters. And the church wants them gone. And then, well, like get out of here, leave already. We're not going to talk about the church's official stance on these people. We won't. Let's get back. Well, we can talk about our official stance on these people. Get them out of here. Send them to Rikers. We don't need them. Send them to, 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 to friggin' what's that place up by uh, Edmonton? Pinoca. Pinoca. <laughs> the <laughs> mental institute. Very esoteric. Uh, so uh, crime podcasts, though. Oh, yeah. She's done her research. She's going to... Oh, yeah, she's got the inside scoop. <laughs> I mean, we're, first of all, it's like true. And let's not forget about the true and faithful. They exist. Yeah. No, I they're had, real. I had people months ago saying, can't wait for when you guys review General Conference. Yeah. There's yeah, a- <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. There That's are, what we're going to do today. And there are people eagerly awaiting that. Oh, I can't wait to review it. So, I mean, you know, send in your emails. <laughs> Are you ready for a Mission Stories true crime podcast? Yeah. Are you ready? I think we are. Um, you know, it's, I was listening uh, to an episode. You know what I do? I was just telling you off of mic, but I'll tell the audience as well that sometimes, well, I, I have a, an acquaintance who she's, uh, well, anyway. <laughs> I <have> an ac- <laughs> You've said too much. <laughs> <laughs> I have an ac- yeah, because it's not favorable what I'm about to say. Um, they have a podcast, and I was listening to it, and it's just like, man, the the rhythm of it is just a little clunky, and I found it hard to listen to. And I thought, I got really self conscious all of a sudden. I was like, do, do we sound like that? So I had to go back and I had to listen. I was like, oh no, we're fine, we're great, we're perfect, and uh, everyone loves us. You're like, this podcast is gold. We're gold, and and I. <laughs> And sometimes, but I'll, I'll listen to one specifically that I'm like particularly self-conscious about. Um, the two, do you think you know which ones I would be the most self-conscious about if you had to guess? Or is this too hard of a game? Um, see, it's here's why it's hard. 
mm-hmm. is it's I've, all I've forgotten any episode. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've purged my memory of, right. of what we've done and what we've said. You I was gotta, like, there have been some particular episodes you were real worried about. Yes. But then they turned out to be very well received. Yeah. Some of the best. Yeah. Um, the ones that I was the most worried about were the one we did with Aiden Christensen. Oh, people loved it. They do. It's you like, came out a hero. Yeah, and I think and I think it's the one, it may have some of the highest, li- I think it's maybe number one, maybe second to um, the very first episode, which is a, a dumpster fire. But um, then the other one was the one I did solo by myself. Yeah, that one was pretty scary. I, it was like a tight, it was like a high wire, tight rope walk. I thought it was a great piece of performance art. It really was. <laughs> wasn't it? I, you know, because we were on such a roll at the time and I didn't want to go a week without it. But this episode, or I don't know if it would be this particular, but like it was basically like a year ago. Like, because it, it was right after the Halloween dance that this all happened and that happened just this past uh friday i believe i didn't make it to that dance but i thought uh maybe i should do that just as like a a wink and a nod to the last time it happened but obviously that hasn't happened and i have not suffered any injuries no injuries have been suffered you're fine your lips are healed and <laughs> And uh, that was the sound of lips. And um, but anyway, I guess the point, the big point of that was um, I forget. <laughs> but is that it was all great. It was all anything you were worried about was unfounded. No, but there was a point, and I think it was something like uh, the. It's interesting to look back, maybe, on journals, and I wanted to do that again, but I haven't done that. So this is all to say that uh, we're g- let's go back to the crime podcast uh, thread there, but um, get it cooking up. You know, well, one interesting thing I am remembering now that I have like a list of things I have to like apologize for and explain. <laughs> okay, from last episode. Sure. I don't know if we got emails about it, uh, but I suppose you know here I, I am. So. I'm going to get ahead of the game here. Yeah. Uh, in our last episode, I uh, I came off rather flippant about my decision to marry my wife. Did you? I, well, here, uh, you don't think so. I don't think so. Important people who listen to the podcast said I came off a little flippant. Like your like wife. I, yeah. <laughs> 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 a little willy-nilly, like, you know. I was trying to prove a point we about... We love Jasmine. You know, yeah. Number one. <laughs> number, number one, true and faithful. Number one, yeah. Sorry. Jasmine, number one. Sorry, I uh, interrupted you. So, what about Jasmine? Well, I was it's, I was trying to make, prove the point about like you know receiving revelation to marry someone, and it's like that's not how it goes. So I wouldn't dare, you know, ask seek, God. Yeah, if you ought to marry Jazz, Jazz. I took the Bruce R. McConkey method to the nth degree, right? And I was just like, you know, who makes this decision? Lyndon. You, and not the first time. Lyndon. <laughs> okay, I was about to say something blasphemous. I'll just filter that. I, when we don't do these often enough, yeah. the filter. The filter we're dissolves of, away. I already feel that we're out of practice, but we're slowly getting back in the game. Remember that big, long thing I had that led nowhere a minute ago? Um, I was going to say, not the first time you've taken something Bruce R. McConkie's done and taken it to the nth degree. It happens to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> So you're coming out with a new Mormon doctor. Obviously, my decision to marry my wife was very important and special to yes. me. Yes, and we love Jasmine. I love her. You love her. I love her too. This podcast loves Jasmine. This podcast loves Jasmine. That's the official stance of this podcast, <laughs> and of you, in particular, and of me. Troy. Also, yes. Last episode, Just bring her on. Last episode, threw my mom right under the bus. What? We we're talking about the word of wisdom. Yeah. Oh, you did you? And once throw again, her? trying to. I was trying to prove a point. Kind of like Joseph Smith. <laughs> I seem to recall this. Kind of like Joseph Smith smoking that stogie. Yeah. To prove a point, and I'm just like, and my own mother smoking stogies <laughs> on the front porch. My own mother, temple worker. <laughs> I've seen her drink 
a matcha tea. Oh, man. And she's just like, how dare you? And then she's like, do you know who recommended that drink to me? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, it was you. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, you told me I should drink that. And I was like, I have no memory of this. Oh, okay. But I also have no memory of me not telling you to drink it. Yeah. So I threw her under the bus. She tried to throw me or pull me under the bus with her. You're like, but the point is, you shook her off. (laughs) The point is, it doesn't matter. Was that the point we were trying to make? Is that the point you want to make right now? I thought, are you a? Is this an apology to to Cheryl? You know, it's funny. I think my parents listen to this, but they (laughs) but they don't like tell me that they do. Just sometimes they'll say things that sort of like... Well, you don't go to church with your parents. No, no, no. I We're don't. in the same world. Oh, you go to church. Right. I yeah. like sit down in a pew and I get a glare. And it's just like... <laughs> it's like, I heard your episode. Oh. I got a thing to say to you. Boy. I just uh, like... Oof. Actually, I think I sat down and I was just like, have you heard the episode yet? I was like, I'm just going to say... I'm just going to jump ahead of this and be like, I might have said something you're not going to like. Have a listen let me know how you feel. Uh-huh. I was right. She was upset. Yeah. But, you know. Rightly so. Rightly so. Bad son. Bad son. Great Worst son. friend. <laughs> <laughs> Great podcaster. So I think the point was the word of wisdom is for our benefit. And here we are being benefited from it. <laughs> Sorry I ratted you out, Ma. Sorry, Cheryl. I think I was, I think, if you go back and listen to that, I think I said, whoa, you know, I think I was like, well, careful, Lyndon, well, careful. To her credit, yeah, they didn't strictly forbid it until months later. Uh, matcha tea? Yeah. Yeah. Is it forbidden? It is now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, but uh... if it was forbidden now... I guess it was still a sin back then. Uh huh. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, despite not having the official stance be against it, I don't know. Therefore, the church is still called the Mormon Church. Nah. By that logic. No, that's nah, not how that works. It only works how I win and how I want it to work. Oh my goodness! Well, I'm glad. I was gonna say, um, I was nervous. I think we've mentioned that I was the MC at your wedding, and I had some some jokes that I, you know, shared. And I remember mm-hmm. feeling uh, after that it it was done. I think I immediately went up to Cheryl, and I was like, "How was that? Was that okay?" And then she said something like, "That'll do, pig. That'll do," or something. It was like it was like uh, just like you did it. Yeah, it's it was. Done. It was. It was a little like. Well, I guess there's no taking it back now, huh? There, that was not a dress rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> there was no practice. Speaking of which. No screening. Finally got that uh, video back. Oh, good. Oh, but not the video you're thinking of. What video? We got like our, you know, the four and a half minute edited wedding video. Four and a half minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Not like the full the full record. That's what you want. So if uh, Mr. Joe is looking for a recommendation on this podcast, <laughs> remember when I got married like six months ago and I yeah. still don't have the videos from it? Yeah. What was the what was the promised delivery date? Uh, like six weeks ago. <laughs> One transfer. We like to stick in uh, mission speak yeah, here. Yeah, this is the Mission Stories podcast. He's about two transfers late. Okay. Well, uh, so you're really looking forward to the footage of that. I d- I am. Well, I'm yeah. looking forward to it too. I want to see if if because it felt pretty good at the time. I think there were some laughs, and uh, I really would just love to to see if that was accurate or not. Yeah. The and I'm vain. The leaves were green when I had my wedding. Now the leaves have changed color and fallen off the trees. Yeah. Still don't have the footage of my wedding. There's, <laughs> We're just calling him out hard right now. He yes. doesn't listen to this, does he? Heaven forbid. We've mentioned him in so many of I don't even want to say the name of his company. Yeah. Because he might, it might promote, they might, people might laugh Bad. and say, I want him yeah, to. Yeah, screw these guys. I want to go I want with him, him to do yeah. my wedding. How's this for a business uh, proposition? You film, you film a wedding, 
Okay. The whole thing. Yeah. Bunch of footage. All the footage. You don't edit anything. Just in just a continuous stream. Raw, live streaming. Raw footage. You get raw footage. And it's Ooh. like maybe like later on down the road, you get like here's here's my little, you know, edited version. But also you get the thing that you really wanted, which was all the raw footage. What do you think about that? Well, I think we are getting both. We okay. got our like one minute sneak peek, the four and a half minute, you know, jazzy little cuts and music mm -hmm. that you show people and they're like, Oh, that's adorable. Yeah. And then it's like now you're getting all the footage later. Okay, so what if what if it was just like a discounted uh rate then? Do do you think people would want that? Just like a DVD. Here's all the footage with the sound, you know, clipped in. I think it's a great idea. Cause it seems like to me Cause he, like, what would you rather watch? Sixteen hours of raw footage. I mean, you're asking the wrong guy because I didn't want any of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it seems like people okay. have enjoyed watching it. Right. So, is it somewhere I can watch? Have you put it somewhere? <laughs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to talk to to Jazz. You gonna post? You guys gonna post it? <laughs> you're asking the wrong guy. I'm just trying to drum up more interest because, like I said, I was like, this video is so late. Yeah. It's past, you know, the expiry date of people being interested that I got married. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I mean, it's people have obviously forgotten that you're married and th that is that the happened. same as not caring. And that's, you know, and you're there was right. A, there's a window of time yeah. where people are eager to swallow up this footage uh -huh. and revel in it. Yeah. And that's gone. It's gone. And nobody cares. It's like it so now happened. I have to artificially drum it up, yeah, all that interest on the podcast. It's almost like you have to get remarried. We've we've discussed that. <laughs> have you really? <laughs> <laughs> Here's another. We have not gotten our like wedding certificate. Wait, are you married? Oh, we've asked that same question. <laughs> are like, are we even? Because Jasmine can't change her last name because she hasn't got uh. a certificate, and we're past the window of how long that should take. We think the bishop. Maybe he didn't file the paperwork right. So we're like, hey, if we're not actually married, let's do it again in Mexico Living with gold insane. straws. That's the joke. We, we saw straws. like gold straws somewhere and we're like, why didn't we have gold, gold straws at our wedding? Yeah, why didn't you? And so now we're like, if we get married again, we're doing it with gold straws. Can I roast everyone again? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to bring Joe in yeah. to fake film our wedding. Yeah. But we're really only bringing him there to roast him for how long it took him <laughs> to deliver the first time. <laughs> yeah. We make a bunch of British jokes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, uh, the British have bad teeth, huh, Joe? And then he flashes his stupid, perfect smile. His perfect, and joke beautiful falls smile. falls completely flat. And then he beats us up in front of everyone. Yeah, he starts speaking in his stupid, like, South London accent. All right, everyone, hello, it's me, Joe Sim. I'm ready to <laughs> film. Is everyone ready? And he's got me in a headlock. He's got you, like, by the foot somehow. Upside down. Yeah, he's holding you like a fish. He just Shaking caught. the coins out of my pockets. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, please, Joe, stop. He's like, Is you had enough yet? You had enough? And then he gives me a noogie with your heel. Ah, ah, Joe. Well, let's not do that. Well, we have no choice. He's going to do it to us. I'm well, like, if we don't invite him, <laughs> if we call off the prank. <laughs> we can't. It's too late. I already texted him. He's already replied yes. Well, that's a pretty fast reply for old Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on, Joe. Anyway, that, that's that was last episode. My, um, uh, my foibles. Yeah, foibles. Uh, that's yeah, too bad. We'll talk to word of wisdom and stuff like that. I got some emails we can sort of peruse. I've okay. Uh, got. Some, I bet some people might have. While we're talking about last episode, they might have had some comments. There, they've been heavy episodes. We had like two heavy episodes, kind of back to back, as heavy as we can muster, because we're pretty like lightweights in all sense of the, of the word anyway um, we're, we're medium weights we're medium weights we're welterweights we try i mean even at our even at our most heavy it's just like our content's still better than uh 
anything the, out there. I'm. Uh, I wish I remember the. I was trying to take a jab at those, the Twitter people. The Desnat. Desnat. The Desnat people hate them. Desnat. Uh, Irene Institute. Oh, ah, the uh, the uh, that BYU. The guy. What's his? The Neil A. Maxwell Institute. Neil A. Maxwell Institute. For good. At least we we lift heavier than them. Hell yeah. Glad that came off so fast and smooth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take that one more time. All our Desnat listeners are just like, <laughs> yeah, screw them. Got them. We need to get out into the, into the, we need to start posting Desnat. Yeah, we need to be on social media. We got to get out there more. We got to get. How come we don't have a, a Twitster? Dude, we, we're so and a Redditster. dumb. <laughs> and we don't do any of this stuff. And we try and we do this and, uh, do you want to see how many people listen to this stuff in the last week? I'm always surprised I get those notifications about the new views. 31. That's so crazy to me. But um, that's cool. Thank- hey, guys, thanks for listening. This is a... Uh, this is. Um, should we read all this? Sure. Who's it from? This how many from- emails? We have- Warm me up. Get the listeners ready. Get me ready. Okay, we have three emails. Uh, Hold on. Let me guess. Guess who they're from. Put the... I'm Johnny Carson. I'm with the envelope. Yep. Uh, He's got a big insensitive turban on. <laughs> <laughs> Better not follow through on this bit then. <laughs> Let's see. Alex Williams. Yes. Uh, Andrew Cacao. Yes. You're not going to get the third one. Because it's someone you don't know. I, then I won't hazard a guess. Clark Fulton is my uh, old companion, good friend from the mission. He's written in before, hasn't he? He's written in before. He's famously uh, pretended to be uh, Satan himself. Oh, he was that guy. He voiced Satan. (laughs) Satan took over his body and and fingers, and he typed up an email. Some people didn't like that. (laughs) Was Was it your mom? Probably. Probably, and anyone with kind of half of a, a conscience probably wouldn't have enjoyed that. And just the number of times I've mentioned his name, Satan, on the podcast. Um, sound like Voldemort. Well, he must not be named. So Alex Williams is uh, first. He says, Lyndon asked, quote, are we, are we just making up Dr. Cummins as we go along? I did ask that. Close quote. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, yes. That's literally what Dean is. So that's his big, re- you know, um, reply to you for that. What do you think about that? Um, Does he get what you were trying to say? Does he? Do you feel acknowledged? Do you? Do you maybe wonder, like maybe he just didn't? So, get like it. I said, are we? <laughs> I'm worried he didn't get it. Yeah. But also, doesn't he have fresher eyes than us? He's a guy. He's uh, Alex is one of our very best friends. And you guest of the podcast. Yeah, he's a guest of Has the he, he was. We've been guests on his. Yeah. We uh we double dipped there. Um he's the kind of guy though, I think, who's gonna say he's gonna take anything and Theo's a little bit like this too, where anything that you throw at them in terms of like, hey, this is kinda like oh they'll be like, No, that's a good thing. That's 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 a, a feature, not a bug. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Because oh. that's what he's he's like. You're saying like, um, what this is crazy. It's all just made up. <laughs> and as it goes along and as it suits our needs, we just change it. And, and then they're like, like, yeah. Yes. That's the whole point. Well, then I think the difference between you and I is when they're like, it's a feature, not a bug. I'm just like, great. <laughs> and and I was like, like, I accept this new reality. And I'm like, no. <laughs> Man, why wasn't the word of wisdom perfect the first time? I was listening to Sam Harris's podcast, uh, Waking Up. No, it used to be called Waking Up. Now it's called something else. Anyway, Sam Harris, uh, sort of noted intellectual atheist guy. I like him though because of his his. Even if I don't agree with everything that he does, um, he is. He seeks after the truth. Right. And Jordan Peterson, and it's sort of like his one overarching um, guiding star is just like, what is true? Let's just follow that. And there's sort of a famous episode of his podcast with Jordan Peterson where he Jordan Peterson comes on 
and they discuss what is truth. Mm-hmm. And they get bogged down for about two hours and they, about what is truth because they sort of have these differing uh, opinions about it. Jordan, like uh, Sam Harris is very much like the sky is blue, the grass is green, facts are facts. No matter if anyone was here or not, those things would remain. Jordan Peterson was like, yeah, but like they're use, I guess if they're useful, they're true sort of a thing, mm-hmm. which was, which was interesting. And it just made me think, cause like Jordan Peterson was like, his whole thing was like higher truth. It's like the kind of truth you would find in the Lord of the Rings or Dostoevsky or any one of these authors are like sort of big right. stories, the sort of things you can live axiomatic truths you can live your life by. Um, and as I was listening to this, I was thinking like, oh, I, I kind of heard you and me in this conversation. Which one? Who am I? You're Jordan. You're more of a Jordan Peterson, I think. And I'm I think, a regular Jordan Peterson. And I think I'm more of a Sam Harris in this regard. Like if you go back and listen to some of these, especially even, especially, especially even our last episode where we're talking about these things, I often get gummed up and like but is it literally true didn't you have like an epiphany in our last episode that's all gone <laughs> <laughs> didn't wasn't your life changed during our last episode it was it was and it is um you but had, i just thought that was you had like a, you had like a breakthrough i did yeah it was and actually uh our second email from uh andrew cacao addresses this and sort of digs up the things that I had sort of, I guess, put to rest or come to some sort of right. terms with. Okay, but I, to Alex's point, I guess what it is is you're like, yeah, it is kind of the point of the Doctrine and Covenants is it's like, bam, we're in the last dispensation with modern prophets, yeah. and so now we're just we're just trickling truth in. And like we talked about, Trickle you know, truth. You know like the Rolling Stone where it's like the stuff that's useless gets chipped away and the stuff that's good stays. Yeah. We all, we have this big talk. So he's kind of saying that's what Doctrine and Covenants is, except it's also a snapshot in time. Yeah. So each section is a snapshot in time. It's contextual. It's very contextual. So we're kind of just like, well, yeah, we haven't made any edits, but then we just kind of work off of it and, just like the wedding footage. So yeah, don't it? <laughs> just I just triggered Lyndon. I just triggered him, uh, and I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's move on. So he like good point, Alex, is what I say to that. Okay. He says also I realized later in the show that you talked about adding the family a proclamation to the world. The way he says it is the family a procla and then ellipses and then in brackets he says you know. So he couldn't even be bothered to finish <laughs> saying a proclamation to the world. The, the thing. The thing will be added to uh, DNC. So I think that's his way of sort of saying, like, he gets where you're coming from. Right. Where we are coming from. Thanks again and, uh, for the insights and thoughts. Lo- lots of love, true and faithful Alex. Alex, thanks for the email. We love you. Number one fan. Don't um, jokes like soft canonized family of proclamation. I mean, it was. We can get into that. We'll get into it. You know we'll get into it. It's funny though, because I feel like these other two emails we could have, we could spend the rest of this episode talking about it. I say we let's go to Clark's uh, Elder Fulton's email, and then we'll um, Clark, get into my old companion, Clark, the missionary formerly known as Elder Fulton. Yes, and then we can get into Andrews because he asks some. Big questions, and maybe we'll answer them quickly or slowly. I don't know. He said, uh, Clark Fulton says, Hey guys, loved your last two episodes. It's nice to have some laughs going into serious topics. I agree that the history should matter 100%. We need an accurate perspective on reality because it impacts the way we teach it and think about it. For me, I've moved away from blanket statements about my faith. Instead of claiming a singular testimony of everything, I have no problem claiming a few smaller testimonies of very specific things that I've actually had experiences with. The way we're wired as humans is that we want to confront a problem, fix it, and then leave it alone. 
But the danger of leaving something alone and unchecked for too long is that the wrong ideas and behaviors can be perpetuated because there's too much of an emphasis on spirituality and not enough emphasis on rational thinking. There's a lot in here so far. Mm -hmm. I don't know. um, I think it's maybe he's talking a little bit about like the shelf analogy that's often bandied about with in relation to difficult uh, subjects. What is it? But, uh, Which part, the mixing spirituality and uh, rationality, or just his leaving something the alone? Blan- the blanket faith statements. He's not. Well, he says that we want. Um, it's it's sort of the classic debate between um, uh, church members, where it's like someone has a crazy question, like myself. And then someone else is like, we don't need that for our spirituality. And so, like he says here, we leave it alone. We don't confront the problem. It doesn't get fixed. It gets left alone for too long. We don't. We leave rational thought out of the argument entirely, and we place it all on like, but how does it make you feel? And while that is a portion of it, I think he's saying that we need to include, you know, rational thinking does matter facts do matter Mm -hmm. which would make sam harris very happy (laughs) um so that's what i think he's saying in some he continues in some ways i think that this uh can result in an artificial spirituality that is more driven by cultural expectations than spiritual truths we need to think about uh, things through both le- both lenses of rationality and spirituality and keep ourselves from being too focused on one over the other. If we do that, I think our kids will have a much stronger perspective on truth than we had growing up. It's even better if we can do that and have some laughs along the way. Thanks for keeping the balance and keeping it light. Clark Fulton. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Any thoughts? Well, they did address this in general conference because I taught an elders quorum lesson um, where one of the themes was like, it was about how like science does not go against religion or anything or like rationality versus spirituality. It's like they're not combative. They're not mutually exclusive. Right. You can have them. And it's like there's a there's got to be a fair balance. You can have your cake and eat it too. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> or not. I think yeah, it was something like that. I just, you know. It, was, it, it, was, it wasn't much of a discussion in Elder's Quorum because everyone was just like, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel good. Move along. <laughs> Get that rational thought out of here. Well, no, they're just like, there's nothing wrong with a rational scientific approach. Because they're like, well, because it's good for, you know, empirical developments. But what about when it, um, and maybe this is too much of a uh, a question to ask, but what about when it um, sort of goes against, uh, what about when rational thought and evidence can sort of, is a little damning to some things we find sort of foundational truths that we have as Latter-day Saints? Nah. <laughs> I was just watching you dismiss what I was saying <laughs> as I was saying it, and I liked it. Ah, there's nothing. What scientific truth disproves anything? None. None. Let's move along. Faith is affirmed here, okay? So this is the email from Andrew Cacao. Uh, his, the subject line reads, What are the implications he says... What a subject line. What I Right? I think it encapsulates it perfectly. Okay, he says, I'm still digging you guys keeping these episodes light. If it was me, I'd edit out right up until you guys start talking about church issues. Get right to the meat and potatoes. Now that I've entered into the podcasting world, I've realized that it's a lot harder than it looks. My respect for you has increased ten times. But, he says, ten times zero is still zero. <laughs> Zing. Zing roasted. JK, you guys are awesome, he says. He doesn't say what the name of his podcast is. I reached out to him on Facebook, which is probably the wrong place to do that. I would like to know what it's called. Is he still doing his rock and roll one? I think 
presumably it's the same one. I I remember I like saw. It I heard his co-host uh, bailed on him. Oh. Um. We're real bad friends. <laughs> we don't know his podcast. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Andrew. Obviously, we don't listen to it. We're the worst. We, if we don't know the name of your podcast. But, it, you know, it's about rock and roll. Garage Band Dads. Rock and roll. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. He's he, You would love it. You love rock and roll. I'm a big rock and roll fan. I remember, like, I think I started into it a while ago, but um It was called, like, uh, White... Rap dads, <laughs> I'd be all over that. You would love that. If it was like rapping life's rap lessons in the gospel, which is the next podcast I'd want to do, <laughs> I'd listen to that. But it's just like you know, rock and roll from the nineties. Sorry, that's Andrew. my that's my bag. Sorry, Andrew. Um, so we'll you know let us know what it's called. And we'll plug it, bro. To Garage our, Band Dads to our thirty listeners. Garage Band Dads. Hopefully that's right. I don't if know if it is. I'm sure there's a podcast by that name. Give it a listen. Give Hopefully it. it's Andrews. And you know what? We could check this right now, but we can't. We're reading an email. Can't be bothered. Um, okay, he continues. Now, what are the implications of the confusions you came to last episode? Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what I remember. So this is his interpretation of what we said. Through, <laughs> right, because we talked about polygamy, right? Joseph Smith and polygamy. What didn't we cover? Jeez. Throughout all... This is what he says. This is his interpretation of what we said. Throughout all time, men accumulate women, (laughs) whether as mistresses or wives. So, practicing polygamy was no different from what happens anyway. His comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they were just products of their time or just doing what men in their position would naturally do? Isn't that the exact opposite of what a prophet is supposed to do? Don't prophets stand on a wall and warn the world about what is to come if people keep doing as they've always done? It He's got a point. <laughs> processing, processing. <laughs> right. Yeah, because it looks kind of, you know, like I'm just like, eh. Yeah. It happens today, it happened then, and it happens before, all in different forms. Yes. You know, biology. I guess the problem is, is as prophets and people in positions of authority, they were trying to justify it as God's way. Yeah. But really, it was kind of just like... Well, I mean... It was like neither here nor there. I'll answer you, and he, he kind of goes on from... What I'm about to say is his next point. But the thing, the conclusion I came to in the last episode was um, it wasn't that on the level. Maybe it ought not to have happened. And yeah, prophets probably shouldn't have done that and eventually got outlawed. So like, um, yeah, probably wasn't the best thing to do anyway. And God, you know, fixed it in the end. But um, and, and then that's, we still half practice it. And we, yeah, it's still a half measure. <laughs> it's, for all intents and purposes, we don't do it. But yeah, it's it still can be done on a spiritual basis. It's very complicated. I don't know. But my point on the last thing was that like bad ideas um, go by the wayside, and good ideas as the Lord intends, survive. It's a meritocracy of good ideas and bad ideas. Gosh, like, you know, people are just like, when are we going to have gay temple ceilings? It's It's common. (laughs) It's like probably never. But what you might see happen is men not being able to, like, because women can get sealed to one man. Yeah. And then, you know, he dies. If they get remarried, it's just like the not sealed for eternity. Yeah. You know, you might see it change where it's like, well, now men can only get sealed to one woman. And if they get remarried, it's just, uh, you know, just for a little for, bit. Just for time. That would be... Uh, Except, well, then... But it's like, but then if that woman has never been sealed to a man for time and all eternity, then like, we'll allow it. I I get... And if she Like, wants, that could be the... That could be, like, the next, you know, change. C- yeah, could be. What do we know? What do we know? We're not in the prophet's pocket. I'm not the prophet's sidekick. I don't. I don't just tell him stuff. That's uh, Mrs. Nelson's job. Yeah. 
So I was like, that would be a more reasonable thing to pop up. Like they're going to be like, we're going to discontinue our spiritual practice of polygamy. Right. I don't know. I mean, some. Well, I mean, Dallin H. Oaks, he brought it up in general conference. Did he? Rather flippantly. (laughs) What did he say? He made a joke about it. He like opened his talk being like, it was like a situation where a (laughs) woman. President Nelson is a polygamist. (laughs) Where he's like, some woman was like, um, if I get married to this man and he's already been sealed to a woman, uh, do I, in the eternities, do I live in the same house as them? Do I get my own house? Like, what's the deal? Do yeah. we visit? And like everyone kind of joked and there was, it was like a kind of joke and they laughed because it's like a, everything, everyone's thought about something like that. Yes. And his point was like, don't worry about it. He ricked everyone. <laughs> like he tells, he's like, like, it's just like, is he going to give an answer for this? He's just like, he's like, you know, am I going to live in the same house in the eternities? Do there I are sm- no do houses. I, do I get a smaller house? Cause I'm like his second wife. What he's not telling us is that we're all just, you know, balls of light floating around in the, yeah. the celestial kingdom. He's like, listen, none of this is going to matter at all. And he's just, he's like, he's like, listen here, Morty. Hey, Morty. <laughs> he's like, just don't, don't think about it. Hey, Morty, nothing matters, Morty. All right. But he's like, thinking about that doesn't help you. <laughs> and it's just like, I he's guess. not wrong. He's not wrong. He's right. He's the next prophet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, that, so the next point that Andrew brings up, he says, as the church matures, this, again, this is him summarizing what we said. As the church matures, it sheds bad ideas, moves forward, and get, gets better. His response, how does that... How is that different from any other prosperous organization? If the LDS church prospers in the same way as any other organization prospers, what does that suggest about its claims of being divinely led by Jesus Christ himself? Coca-Cola dropped the new Coke when sales tanked. They should have bad idea when it got and got better. Does that mean Coca-Cola is also led by a prophet? Or is the LDS church just led by disciplined and skilled managers? I'm interested to hear your thoughts on the implications of your conclusions. Both. Well, I feel like Jordan Peterson would jump in here and just be like, well, yeah. Because it's like, do you think Coca-Cola is going to be around for eternity? At this point, basically, yeah. Yes. (laughs) Where it's just like, they're like led by divine principles that keeps them going at this point, really. Yes. Laws, irrevocable Hmm. laws. Yeah, I mean, it, it might... You could make that argument that it's a it's a principles and laws sort of thing, much like um, much like the view of absolute truth, wherein wherever a true principle is applied, it is still true, and us knowing about it or labeling it any such way does not change the fact that it is still a true principle. Gravity is always going to be gravity, and managerial principles are always true wherever they are uh, handled. I I will say this. um, There's been many, many churches and many of them, uh, even Mormon, the Mormon offshoots have Mm -hmm. also existed. And the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, as it is today has been, I think is successful, yeah, because it has been run by uh, skilled managers. But were they all skilled? Well, managers, sk- you know, s- skilled managers, or did they divinely inspired? Yeah, because I mean, we're dealing with a small sample size. But Richard Dawkins, mm-hmm. famous, famished, yeah, a famethist, a shame. famous atheist. He was on Joe Rogan, Some atheist. and I think he was talking about how happy he is about like religions declining. Yes, but then it was also brought, and then it was brought up that you know like the Latter Day Saints are on the up and up. Yes, and he's like that makes me really depressed. Yeah, and everyone's just like <laughs> win. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like the sample size. It's like well, Coca Cola has been doing great, and the church has been doing great, and it's like well, good for them. Yeah. You know, it's like a stone cut without hands rolling down the mountain. Coca-Cola's rolling down the mountain too. Well, it's but just like a... but you know, this is but in the length of the eternities, will God's kingdom on earth continue to prosper and thrive? 
Yes. You betcha, yeah, Andrew. Andrew. You betcha it will. Will Coca-Cola always? I don't know. Maybe. If they continue to abide in the correct principles of management if as they create, exercised If in... they create cola beverages continually under God's divine light, then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the President Uchtdorf is willing to drink in a brown paper bag, <laughs> then yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's just a matter of... Um, you could chalk it up to just true principles being employed and God uh, is giving out these principles to all who are willing to learn and ask and and wouldn't wouldn't yeah. God's true church be run with the best organizational uh, principles to this I say yes yeah it would be so so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think those are some good arguments. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. It's like the church doesn't have the monopoly but, on truth. No. The monopoly on good decisions. No. Um, that being said, there's a lot of other Christian churches that are also successfully run. <laughs> so uh, just Apparently like, the list is getting smaller and smaller, though. Oh, really? Well, it's like when unrighteousness enters the picture or, you know, criminal fraudulent behavior, then organizations go belly up. Mm-hmm. So... If we've survived this long, those uh, internal church audits must be, uh, you know, correct when they say that everything's good. When not bending to peer pressure. Yeah. I mean, what did Kanye West say in his new gospel rap album? Something about, we're not living for the culture, we're nobody's slaves. Yeah. We're not living for the culture. Amen, brother. We're nobody's slaves. Amen, brother Kanye. Bring him on the podcast. I wish. Bring him on. He won't even go on Joe Rogan. <laughs> um, now, we... Ha- okay, so... Do you... Okay, so let's just go ahead and assume that we both watched all of General Conference. Most of it. Yeah. And I between you and I, yeah, saw we saw most of it. We saw most of it, or at least we got the live Twitter feed. We got the gist of it. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't watch women's session. That'd be inappropriate. Yeah, you you would burn up in flames if you tried. But we heard about what was said. Yeah, did you, S- Sister Reina? No, I don't. Queen. You, okay. Her first name is literally Queen. Queen. Alberto. Alberto. Alberto? Umberto? I don't know. She gave a really good talk about mental health. Okay. People really liked that. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's from the women's session. It'd be inappropriate for me to listen and internalize Lyndon, that message. Can I confess something to you? And I'm I'm realizing now as we're saying this, as we're talking, that it would be dishonest of me <gasps> to continue this conversation. Because I'll I'll be honest, due to extenuating circumstances beyond my control. I didn't watch a lick of conference. <laughs> None of it. I think I watched maybe one bit of it. Despite the known <laughs> journalistic expectation you have. And all the time we had in between where I could have like got caught up on it, I still have not. But I feel like we sh- we need to cover it. But I don't know that I can cover I Well, now can. I feel like I'm just going to be telling you the best parts. Yeah, I mean, a short little review. Do I not need to watch it? Is it just, is this how I'm going to get conference? Is you telling me the highlights? And then people are going to listen to me explain conference to you. Yeah. I mean, the most important thing, I think, was Uchtdorf's talk. Okay. Oh, I yeah. Uh, you heard it, yeah. Going on an adventure. He's done with Hobbits. aviation references. Yeah. And it's just Joseph Campbell, hero with a thousand faces. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing but... Hero's Journey references from here on out. It's just like, it's it's hobbits. Yeah. He's going to be like talking about Star Wars. Dope. The Matrix, probably. He's just like, yeah, you know what the church always was? A hero's journey. Basically. It really is. He's like, the church was always an airplane. But the people are getting sick of that. Yeah. The church was always flying through the air. Following the principles of aviation. He's like, but now. Hero's journey in pop culture. He's just, bam, puts it in there. 
I I like that analogy because I really I really do connect with. It. That's always my my go to when I you know when I'm thinking like just because things are not literally true, they can still be uh, figuratively true in a high a higher truth sense in the way that a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff, which is literally what he was talking about, mm-hmm. bravery, courage, yeah, difficult situations. It gets me every time that line. In the Hobbit, I don't even think it was in the book. I think they just wrote it in for the movie, because mm. it's like Galadriel, not in the book. Yup, it's just like Gandalf. Why the hobbits? And then like the music is just he's just like dur, dur, dur. he's like why the hobbits? And it's Gandalf is just like there's something about the small and simple things. You no one expects them to excel, and they all and I'm just like I'm a hobbit. Don't. I'm a small, simple thing. Tempt me, Frodo. Yeah. I'm just a little hobbit trying to do my best. A little hobbit. You know what always gets me? The hobbits are us. (laughs) We are them. I'm Frodo. And Sam. I always love uh, uh, Boromir in Lord of the Rings, uh, Fellowship of the Ring. He's turned his back on the... uh, you know, he's he's allowed himself to succumb to temptation to try to get the ring from Frodo on several occasions. And at the end, he's he's given he's laying down his life to protect Merry and Pippin as they get away from the Urukai. And he's taking arrows to the back and it's just like slow motion and his and his hair is just like ugh, you know, flying as he gets hit with the arrows. And then he's like about to die in Aragorn after he defeats everyone comes up and he's just like cradling Boromir in his hands. And Boromir says, I would have followed you, my brother, my captain, my king or something like that. And uh, boy, oh boy, if the tears aren't flowing every time I I wanted to, I couldn't do it with full sincerity because I would be crying right now. Right. If I did. So so this is what you're telling me. Instead of watching General Conference, I could have just watched Lord of the Rings. Well. Which I did. <laughs> Unintentionally. <laughs> well, I, this, that's the whole point, just right? Kidding, you know, it's answer. like that wholesome story. Boromir, the whole redemption arc right there. You yeah, know? yeah. <sighs> you know, yeah. How yeah. was Holland's talk? <laughs> Lame. Overrated. <laughs> it's his day. I'm all. I'm always a Holland hater. He drops a few bangers. Yeah. And then everyone's like, "Oh, I can't wait for Elder Holland to speak. He's always the best." He was on a roll for a decade, shall we say? Yeah. Uh. But yeah, you're right. Like, there's the last. I don't know. Where He's got like, a good track record. Where it's like, yeah, his talk was good. <laughs> You're, you just can't be pleased. I want straight Holland bangers. You want a Holland banger every he time. He sets the standard. I mean, he is good, though. And that's what I want. He's a good storyteller. I got to listen to Okay, him. he did a good job. I'll have to listen to his. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm all about D. Todd Christofferson. D. So. Todd, he, was he good? Nah. <laughs> well, you know, it's good. You're well, like, it's, it's all good. It's, it's all good. good. <laughs> it's the classic, you know, somewhat, you know, X percentage of people needed to hear Holland's message. Right. Oh, okay. I didn't necessarily. So it's very specific. Yeah. You know. Who was it for? Well, let me. I remember his message had like three. The message, the meaning, the multitude. By Jeffrey Vague. R. Holland. But okay. Yeah. It's all about trying to see um oh he made us he had like a little little meme thing. Yeah, people were like hating this on Twitter. It showed like someone sent and it could be fabricated. It was hilarious. It showed this is the little picture. Okay. There see that baby sticking his little leg up? Baby sticking his leg up, yep. So everyone was that was when they were sustaining President <laughs> Nelson and the baby's just sitting there drinking from his bottle. And then when everyone raises their hand to sustain President Nelson, uh-huh. he sticks his chubby little baby thigh straight yeah. in the air <laughs> to sustain the prophet. And it's like the veil is still so thin with him. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And then, yeah, people on Twitter are like, that's just a random picture. 
Miracles he made he made true. it up. That baby did not sustain the prophet with his chubby little thigh. And it's like haters gonna hate. He could have. And it's just like it's what's so. true. That that little story warmed your heart. Uh huh. Then that's what's true. Yeah. Jordan Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> Does it matter if it was actually uh right when they said please raise your you know, sustain, however they say that? I don't know. So okay. it's all about, you know, finding, you know, the usual, finding the one Christ-centered. Was there anything controversial? Was there anything like, you know, was, you know? Well, let's see. They updated the youth program. You know, it's like young men's gone. Oh. Mutual. Is this all new to you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you don't go to family war. Oh, so. yeah, I don't. Yeah. So young women still, exi- they got rid of, they did get rid of like beehives, my maids, laurels. Okay. That's all gone. Yeah. Which makes sense because my, my maids was like an acronym from like mutual something association from like the sixties. It was like, it looked so, like Mia maids. Yeah. So they're just like, they're like, okay, the young women still exist. Throw out their silly names. Yeah. And they're like, young men's, why does it even exist? We already have priesthood quorums. Yeah. Young men's, gone. Cool. Not completely. There's still like, there'll be like a stake young men's presidency. Okay. But at the ward level, psh, psh, it's all gone. Much the way that, uh, you know, ministering has replaced home teaching. Yeah. So it's like, it's still there. It's just called something different. Well, well it's because they're like, why is like the high priest group elders quorum. They're like, why are we doubling up? Yeah. Call them all elder squirm. Okay. They're like, why are we doubling up? You have priesthood and young men's. Just have one. You have priesthood. I like it. Smart. Yeah. And then they change the uh, like personal progress. You know, those things that we never really did. I never did that. Never did it. So it doesn't affect me. So, well, they changed it so that it's like, it's a make your own personal progress program. Oh, cool. So rather than like, you know, with women, it's like, make six quilts. And it's like, what if I don't like quilting? What if I don't like it? God wants you to make the quilts, sweetheart. Make the quilts. Instead, it's just like, well, make six things that bring you closer to Christ. Like pies. Yeah. Blankets. Still in the home economics (laughs) centered. It's got to be. Skirts. Duvets. Wreaths. Baked goods. Home decor. (laughs) Doilies. Socks. Uh, hair, baby bonnets. Learn, learn how to do your hair. <laughs> learn how to put a little rouge on your cheeks, sweetheart. Yeah. Can you imagine if that was like a person of progress? <laughs> I feel like it probably was. There's probably like a grooming section. Yeah. Where it's like, learn to be pretty <laughs> for your future RM husband. Did you ever see um? What's that show? Wet Hot American Summer. I think I Did you get into that. I watched the movie and I think I watched a few episodes of the show and I was like, you didn't like it. I don't know if I finished it. It got to be like a little, a little too loosey goosey. I see. I really enjoyed it. There's one part where, cause there's the guy who's got the girlfriend across the river, but he's like, he's like the snob and he's got like two, polo shirts on at the right. same time and he's just like the oh I'm you know my father will hear about this he's like <laughs> he talks to his girlfriend or something and they're trying to make him look like a bad guy so he's just like um when I see you at the dance maybe you should put a little rouge on and I always <laughs> I always love it always gets you that he was like giving makeup tips or something mm-hmm so it well, seems the young women, and well, and now it's like the primary kids kind of have the same thing. Okay. So it's for all the the chitlins, twelve and up or something. You know. What about the younger kids? What happens to them? They can't be trusted with anything. <laughs> they run the halls till they're twelve. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. Like dogs. That's a good question. What do they do? Well, I don't think they have a special program. They just still go to class during church. 
You know, it's so funny. I haven't been to a family ward since this two hour thing got changed. So it's really kind of a a mystery to me what all happens. Do you think kids love it? I couldn't tell you. Do you think they're loving it? I'm in a f- I'm in like a non family ward. Wait, what ward are you in? Bow Valley, the famous newlywed and nearly dead. Uh, so it's not officially near <laughs> newlywed and nearly dead. Yeah, there's, it just there's, happens. There's, it's there's so like happened. six children in my ward. I don't know what they do. Okay, they I have not like <laughs> staked it out and like followed them around. Maybe you Done should like do an that. Expose. Yeah, do a documentary. Get Joe involved. Be the yeah, cameraman. He could, he could film it. He could film and you. And then we'll never see it. Yeah, <laughs> for the best because you following children around uh, That's, chapels. It's not good not, content. It's not a good uh, look. Um, okay. If you had to recommend one thing to President Nelson, what's the, what would the next big change be if you were in charge? (sighs) President Naglas, prophet, seer, revelator. Um... We're going back to three hour church. (laughs) 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 It wasn't enough. We weren't... (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Just kidding. And then it's option. It becomes tiered. It's like. Oh, there's tiers now. Yeah. Some people get put in three hour church. Four. Some people get put in two hour church. Some people just go to one hour church. What about four hour church? Like remedial, like summer school. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get caught up on church. You got to go to all four hours. Or let's say instead of paying tithing, you just like put in more time. So like. You get like tithing credits depending yeah. on your calling. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that's a great idea. Oh. Man hours, man labor hours. Interesting. But they already get that now plus tithing. So. Yeah. But also sometimes, uh, I don't know. I think that's that's that would be my big thing. I think. Like tithing, Tith- switch tithing to like a cryptocurrency. Yes. And the more GPUs you get mining. Uh huh. Is a tithing credit. Yeah, and you can and uh, you can pay off sins and stuff with these credits, and you can know. like advance pay for one. You're like, hey, I've saved up all my tithing. I've mined enough tithing crypto to kill a man, and I'm gonna. <laughs> and they're just like, we'll have to look the other way. And the and the law is just like, our hands are tied. <laughs> crypto tithing bucks. They're like, they paid off the police force. Sir, he... <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, yeah. Didn't we already make like a heretical crypto joke in a skit? We did. We sure did. And uh, you refused to say the most heretical line exactly as it was written because it was too much. Uh, Which one? I thought I said the thing. <laughs> Well, the line, it was something like you can buy anything in this world with, uh, what was the coin called? Kirtland coin. Kirtland coin. Yeah. I said that line. Yeah, but it was supposed to be a play on the other thing that sounds exactly like that. You can buy anything. I played it exactly how it should have been played so that people would get it. Yeah, that's true. Without actually saying it. Yeah. Yeah. You skipped the in this world part. Which is, uh, I think it was fine. I think, uh, you know, when you're sitting there clacking on the keyboard and you, the things are coming, you're 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 putting it all down. But sometimes you got to make these editorial changes on the day. <laughs> so I applaud you for that. It got the appropriate amount of laughs. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, <laughs> and the right like, oh, 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 and of course, those who don't know what we're talking about will never know. And that's okay. If anyone is listening to this and they haven't watched our skits, shame. Yeah, go check them out. They're on... Uh, they exist on My the YouTube channel. I guess on the Mission Stories. We used to have a website, didn't we? We did. That is gone. That is now gone. It is not worth it, I will say. I think at least one person found the skits on the website. Yes. and One he, human person. That was Andrew Cacao. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we could... I, I don't know if they're on the YouTube channel i guess we could put them on there i don't think anyone's too worried about it we gotta get more savvy bro with all the marketing and the 
or not. I don't know. <laughs> we got to get the word out. Go on Desnat friggin' Twitter. What if the, what if the Desnat people listen to our podcast and shred us to bits? What if they shred us? Hey, bring it on, man. Hey. No. <laughs> bring it bad on. Publis- publicity. <laughs> bad publicity. Bad publicity. Bad publicity. And you know what they say. Publicity is publicity. Bad publicity is good publicity. <laughs> <laughs> and we just got canceled from nothing because we don't do anything. This is the only thing that we do. Well, let's see. So did we um, did we answer those emails sufficiently? I don't know. Andrew's going to be upset. What else? He's going to say, no? "Solve my faith hey, crisis." Here's a here's a answer for you, Andrew. Put it on the shelf and leave it for ten years. Come see what happens. And, come back and visit it in ten years. Yeah. See what's happened to it. See if that jar's got some mold in it. Bad advice. Okay, don't do that. Deal with it. Open it up. I did see a little tweety tweet about, uh, what was it, by common consent, that little blog. Okay. Where they're like, you know, they talk about burying your testimony uh, strengthens can strengthen people's faith. Yeah. If they hear a testimony, it could strengthen them. They're like, we often write articles about dissent. Yeah. They're like, is that potentially harming people's testimonies? You're damn right. <laughs> they're like it's not like it's wrong to like have opinion dissenting opinions and to discuss and talk about it <laughs> but if a testimony can strengthen someone's face face can strengthen their face faith. and their faith their face <laughs> yeah they're like could dissent do, it's basically like that meme like are we the baddies <laughs> are we thanos by common consent am i freddy krueger they're just like wait a second <laughs> should we not be doing this are we bad um, people? I don't know, man. So, what do you think? Are they? Yeah. Yeah, they are bad. And we're the good guys. We're the good guys. They're bad. Hashtag Desnat. We're good. They're the bad guys. Hashtag screw them. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What else should we talk about? Do we have the sun's else? getting The sun's getting low. The sun's getting real low, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, well... I guess we could close it out. There, you know, there were a couple moments in the last ten minutes where there would have been nice, good, big laughs to close on. <laughs> but why don't we go out as usual with a whimper and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see the big takeaways. Sure, top five, top ten takeaways. <laughs> <laughs> so much homework for ourselves. All right. Top 10 25 takeaways. takeaways. Okay. Hit us up if you want to hear about true crime. True. Okay. True crime. Keep sending in those uh, the emails. Yeah. We're looking at you, Alex. And Andrew and Clark. You know, Andrew and will keep us in check. Yeah. I'm surprised she didn't email in about her upset. Dude, she's done. She's she checked out. She doesn't listen. No. That's okay. That's. I mean, shucks. it's not okay, but. Shucks. Well, well, you know, fall short. We can't keep them all. No. <laughs> or any. <laughs> what else? Uh, conference. Watch it. Watch conference. Watch all the movies that have the hero's journey. Yeah. Moana. Moana is a good one. The Matrix. Matrix. Star Wars. Original series. Prequels Prequel trilogy. and the new ones. And the new and the sequels. A little too uh, postmodern. Yeah, a little stupid. So Just maybe kidding. not that. Lord Love of the them. Rings. Stick to that. What's the best uh, um, iteration of the hero's journey in your estimation? The best one. Yeah, your or your favorite or the best or are there those two could be different. Well, I think the entire uh, Tolkien universe is the Tolkien verse, right? Yeah, because you got several heroes, right? It's it's like several, you got several heroes' journeys happening simultaneously. You know, and all the races. You know, that's like elves are basically like celestial 
man. Yeah. Hobbits are just like little, they're literally <laughs> like little baby men. Because it's like in in Middle Earth, men kind of represent. But there's men in Middle Earth. But they kind of represent the negative because like mankind, right. humankind, people kind. Yeah. In Canada, we say people kind. Yeah. Is um, complex. That's true. And it's like when you make these like Star Wars universe middle and there's different races and species. Yeah. It's kind of like men only represent a portion of humankind. And hobbits, actually, because they're all humanoids. Yes. So hobbits represent a certain portion of it. The elves represent a certain portion of it. Dwarves, even. Yes. So. So it's all, everyone's just in there like a melting pot or a mosaic, depending on which country you're from. And and it's all just a bunch of heroes on a hero's journey. Because guess, because what's life, Lyndon? Life's a mission. I thought it was a journey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye.